Next, we'll have Graham Anthony from BioVista. Here he is now. Thank you. I'm Graham Anthony from BioVista. Um, just to see who's in the audience, um, how many of you are with companies? Okay. And how many of you are with investors? Okay, some of you are both, this is good. This little button work here. Yeah. BioVista exists to find new uses for drugs. If I can work in the right direction. And the reason, of course, we're all here, and the reason that there's so much demand is the patent cliff. As everyone knows, billions and billions of dollars of pharma's existing revenue is going to disappear as their drugs fall off the patent cliff. The easiest and fastest solution we believe to replace that revenue is um, repositioning. There's some famous uh, repositionings. There's, of course, uh, Pfizer's heart drug that became Viagra. There's Celgene's morning sickness drug that became Revlimid, uh, basis of their $20 billion market cap. And then, of course, most recently, Aller um, Allergan took its glaucoma drug, which was an injectable, and found that it had a side effect of growing eyelashes and turned it into a gel, Latisse, for eyelash growth. And it's been incredibly successful commercially. BioVista helps people understand how drugs act on the body, both in a good way. We can take an existing drug to find a new indication. We can take an existing target and target a new drug, find a new drug or new indication. Or we can start even with a disease of interest um, and help you find new drugs. And we'll see some examples of that in a minute. The flip side, of course, of a new indication is the drug acting on the body in bad ways or an adverse event. Um, and we can take your drug of interest or any drug of interest and predict what's likely to go wrong in the clinic. So why should you listen to us? Well, that's a question we get asked a lot. These are big claims that we're making. Well, we worked on 44 projects with the FDA before they were willing to accept that what we said that we could do, we could do. And uh, we have now, you'll see on our uh, press release, um, that we've been working with the Office of Clinical Pharmacology um, to predict what can go wrong in the body uh, when drugs enter the clinic. And again, on the 44 projects, they came to us and they said, this drug failed in the clinic. Why? Why mechanistically did it fail? It, it wasn't obvious. And we would come up with a, the mechanistic reasoning for the drug failing. However, um, they said, after 44 drugs, they said, gee, it would be nice to know if we could know what would go wrong in the clinic before it went wrong. Additionally, uh, and increasingly thanks to the FDA, Big Pharma uh, listens to us. We're negotiating collaborations with four of the top uh, pharma companies to uh, reposition some of their existing pipeline. Who are we? Like everyone in this room and everyone in this conference, we're a bunch of smart people with a lot of good experience. I'll be happy to talk to any of you about our background um, offline. So fine, you can find new drugs and reposition them, but are they worth anything? Well, there are a couple good business signals that we've seen recently. Um, Macusite was paid $50 million by the Japanese drug company Santen to work on their repositioned drug targeting macular degeneration, 50 million bucks, and of course everyone knows about the quarter of a billion dollars Pfizer paid Medivation for a repositioned Russian cough drug. So, by Vista, you can find new drugs. Some important industry folks have bought in. They may even be worth something. So, how do you do it? Very simply, we create a fingerprint of every drug, every disease, and every adverse event um, on a very, very deep mechanistic level. Um, and we then compare, like the FBI does with its fingerprint matching, those fingerprints from the perpetrator and the crime in this case. Um, so in traditional drug discovery, you've got a smart person that knows where to look or and has studied a great thing. The problem is he may have a global missed optimum, which is that peak with the, on the left. What BioVista does is it leaves no stone unturned. It's, fingerprint for all drug indications, all adverse events, and all diseases that have been recorded. And so when you ask it a question, you know that no stones have been unturned. Does it work? You'll hear, see a couple drugs that we'll show and um, some profiling, of course, our projects. Uh, this is BVA 101, a orally available small molecule. We decided to work in MS. We came up with this drug. The top line is no treatment. The bottom line is the positive control dexamethasone works great but kills the mouse. You can see here that the yellow line, our drug, arrested the disease and actually uh, caused it to, to um, uh, the patient to improve. Same thing with BVA-201, another orally available small molecule. Got this data from within, same thing in epilepsy. I have no idea what this chart means. I'm a business guy. They tell me it means that it worked very well. So the bottom line is anyone can do what we say we can do. 
except it costs a lot of money and a lot of time. From the time we decided to work in MS and epilepsy to the time we got that data you just saw was 100 days. Um, we've uh, proven the same thing in adverse event prediction. The FDA, you can find our FDA press release and how the FDA is working with us on our website. So for the business owners in here, here's our proposition to you. Let us be your no stone unturned partner. Let us help you find new uses for your existing drugs. Or for those of you who are entering the clinic and you'd like to know, as we heard on the panel discussion, which patient cohorts are most likely to respond positively to your drug and which patient cohorts are most likely not to respond to your drug, we can help you do that before you enter the clinic and also help you answer the questions that the FDA may ask. Also, for those of you who have a, uh, a, a compound that may have other uses, it sure would be nice for you to patent your own indications rather than have Merck or someone else come and grab those IP uses. For those of you who are investors, um, in the process of doing this work, we've come across 60 compounds that we believe will have strong efficacy in over nine indications. We'd like to work with you to pick the 20th best candidate, prove the efficacy in vivo, as you've seen in three of the candidates, um, then advance those that succeed in vivo. To date, three out of five of every drug we put in into animals have shown strong efficacy, um, and then move those through the clinic. And again, because these are existing safe drugs, we're entering the clinic in effect at a phase 2A level, uh, and the odds of success there tend to be about 30%. So for what it would cost to take a basic drug through the clinical process, we can take 20 drugs through the process and have four come out the other thing. Again, this is all about the improving the odds of risk and reward. You can do an NCE for a couple billion dollars and have a blockbuster, or you can reposition a drug for a whole lot less, and if you meet the unmet medical need, make a lot of money. So, thank you very much for your undivided attention. I'm around afterwards for any of you who want to talk, and uh, again, thank you very much for your time and interest.